Welcome to Car and Driver's Lightning Lap. Our annual track test, we traveled to Virginia International Raceway, or VIR, to lap the hottest performance cars of the year. And unlike our other tests, at Lightning Lap, all we care about is a car's lap time. Each car is tested in unmodified street condition, just as you would buy them at your local Subaru or Porsche dealer. When possible, we request that the cars be fitted with the highest performance options available to the buyer. We roll those options into what we call the base price. Four editors lap the 4.1 mile long track. Each editor is assigned to drive a group of cars, but we also drive each other's cars to make sure that we are getting the very best possible times. To record lap times, as well as vehicle speed, lateral G, and sector times, we use a GPS RaceLogic V-Box. Now that you're up to speed, let's take a look at the cars of the LL3 category. The Lightning Lap 3 category is for cars from $60,000 up to $120,000. This year, eight cars competed for LL3 honors. The Ford Shelby GT500, the Porsche Boxster S, the Audi RS5, the Audi S6, the BMW M5, the Porsche 911 Carrera S, the BMW M6, and the Mercedes-Benz C63 Black Series. The Audi S6's performance at VIR is cruel proof of what a track can do to an otherwise superlative sports sedan. Fresh out of the box, the S6 beat out a Mercedes-Benz E63 AMG and the new BMW M5 in a comparison test, but that comparison test didn't have a track component. At VIR, the S6's handling proved to suffer from understeer. As much as we tried to reduce the amount of understeer the S6 exhibited, the Audi resisted, and with hot, greasy tires the understeer only became more dominant. Even with the S6's torque vectoring rear differential, the S6 remained immune to our attempts to get the rear tires into the act. Through the slower corners, the front tires could be heard howling in protest. Pointed straight, the 4-liter twin-turbo V8 quickly dialed up the boost and left a thrilling V8 sound in its wake. The dual-clutch transmission tries its best to decrease lap times with immediate upshifts and throttle blip downshifts. The Audi never came into its own on the track. While the engine and transmission proved willing, the chassis couldn't quite measure up. As a result, it lapped the course in 3 minutes, 9.8 seconds. Slower than the M5 and slower than the E63 we tested last year. We patiently await the debut of the more track-focused RS6. If we had to pick one part of the BMW M5 that we love, it would have to be the 560 horsepower twin-turbo 4.4 liter V8. It's a warhorse that fiercely pulls this 4,425 pound sedan and refuses to yield under fire. Big speed demands good brakes, and the M5 has good brakes, but the performance and feel proved inconsistent. One lap would feel great, then on the next lap, braking in the same place, the M5 wouldn't slow down quickly enough to make the corner. Next lap, they were back. The brakes never failed, but their inconsistent performance in the face of 560 horsepower shook our confidence. The M5 weighs a staggering 4,425 pounds, and the Michelin Pilot Supersports could only take so much abuse. A few laps is all it takes to get them hot and greasy, and at that point, the M5 becomes prone to understeer. Little information comes through the M5 steering, and the weighting seems pointlessly heavy, especially in the sportiest of the three available settings. But the M5 did post a respectable time of 3 minutes, 5.2 seconds, thanks to that engine. The M5's two-door twin, the M6, provided a very similar experience. There were moments when we struggled to remember whether we'd just driven the M5 or the M6. One key difference between the M5 and the M6 is the weight. The M6 is 206 pounds lighter than the M5. It should come as no surprise then that the M6 posted a lap time only slightly quicker than the M5's. As with the M5, a general lack of feedback from the braking and steering system soured our confidence. 
Under braking, the M6's rear end becomes surprisingly unstable, but the $10,000 carbon ceramic brakes manage to slow the over two-ton coupe with greater consistency than the M5's brakes. The mighty 560 horsepower V8 is as good here as it is in the M5. On the long straight, the M6 hit 142 miles per hour. This is a big car with a high, broad instrument panel and a long hood. Consequently, it's not an easy car to place on the track. As in the M5, the engine is the real story here. The M6 is very fast, almost deceptively slow because the big coupe is so quiet and serene at high speeds. But that serenity and isolation is what holds the M6 back on the track. With a little attention to the brakes and steering feel, the M6 could transform itself from sporty coupe into a track star that might better its time of 3 minutes, 4.7 seconds. Of all the cars able to lap the track below 3 minutes and 5 seconds, none have felt quite as slow and drama free as the Audi RS5. Part of that is the sweet sounding but peaky 4.2 liter V8 that doesn't quite press you into the seat like the turbocharged V8 in the Audi S6. The Audi RS5 isn't slow though, it just doesn't slam you into the seat nor does it feel very threatening as it goes around corners. Nose heavy weight distribution brings understeer in slow corners. And it's not the prettiest or most exciting way around those corners, but the RS5 has enough grip and power to be considered seriously quick. In longer sweeping corners like those of Sector 4, the RS5 becomes more fun. The rear tires get into the act and the torque vectoring differential helps the car rotate. While the RS5 might not feel quick, its lap time of 3 minutes, 4.3 seconds, is 0.3 seconds faster than the mid-engine Audi R8 we tested in 2007. That's quick. Slightly larger than before, the new Boxster comes on the heels of the track-ready, lightweight Boxster Spider we tested last year. And even though the Boxster S we tested this year is less extreme than its predecessor, it still managed to nearly match the Boxster Spider's lap time. The larger size Boxster is more stable than before and graced with incredible front end grip. It doesn't change direction as quickly as its predecessor, but it does have a reactive race car like chassis. Oversteer is always on the menu. Keeping the rear end settled requires constant attention from the brakes, steering, and throttle. Strong brakes erase speed with zero drama. On the straights, we did wish for a bit more than the 315 horsepower the 3.4 liter flat six puts out. With more power, the Boxster would certainly exit corners faster and hit higher speeds on the straights. But then again, it might threaten the supremacy of the 911. As it stands, the Boxster S posted a time of three minutes, 4.2 seconds. At 662 horsepower, the Ford Shelby GT500 is the most powerful car we've ever tested at VIR. So you may be wondering why it couldn't put down a sub three minute lap. You may also be wondering why it couldn't beat the heavier and less powerful Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. It comes down to two related reasons, balance and traction. While it's true that the GT500 is lighter than the ZL1, that's not the full story. The GT500 carries 56.6% of its weight over the front wheels. The ZL1 achieves better balance with 52.2% of its mass resting up front. Nose heavy, powerful, and rear drive is a combination that makes putting power down difficult. Ask anyone driving a two-wheel drive pickup in the snow. So with only 43.4% of its mass over the drive wheels, the GT500 couldn't accelerate out of corners as hard as the ZL1. It struggled to get the power to the ground. It couldn't turn its impressive horsepower into miles per hour. Turn and grip, however, was strong. In Sector 1, the GT500 managed to match the ZL1's peak grip. But by the exit of the corner, the GT500 was going 4.6 miles per hour slower than the ZL1. Quick transitions unsettle the GT500 more than the ZL1 and cost time in the uphill S's. Good brakes are a plus, but the GT500 is not a car that is comfortable at the limit. The result was a time of 3 minutes, 0.6 seconds. In the never-ending battle between Camaro and Mustang, the Camaro has won this round and proving that handling can trump horsepower at VIR. It didn't take many laps to dial in the Porsche 911 Carrera S's lap time. The new 911, known as the 991 in Porsche circles, is more comfortable at the limit than its immediate predecessor. And once you reach that limit, it's easy to stay there. A lot of the credit has to go to the stabilizing effect of a 4 inch longer wheelbase and the widened track. Comparing the 400 horsepower Carrera S with its predecessors is telling. 
Through the uphill S's, the new 911 is fractionally quicker than the previous generation 530 horsepower Turbo S, despite entering the sector at a speed 6.5 miles per hour slower than the Turbo S. The newfound stability pays a big dividend in this section, and the new car's poise makes it easier to put the power down sooner out of a corner. Witness how the 991 exited Sector 2 at 5.3 miles per hour faster than the Turbo S. In the downhill Sector 3, the new 911 outpaced the far more extreme and powerful 911 GT3 RS we tested two years ago by a tenth of a second. Here again, improved stability and confidence allowed for higher speeds. The 911 is a car taken off its toes and put onto its feet. Porsche smoothed out the 911's dartiness and jumpiness. Directional changes are less frantic than before, making for a more settled and capable track car. Its lap time snuck in under 3 minutes at 2 minutes 58.9 seconds. Yes, the seatbelts are red and the carbon fiber spoiler looks like it might have been ordered for a Honda Civic, but the Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG Black Series is no poser. For an extra $43,570, AMG completely changes the on-track demeanor of the regular $64,000 C63 Coupe. Wider tires, broader shoulders and hips, massive vents, a front splitter, jaw-mounted canards, larger brakes, a completely reworked suspension, and 510 horsepower combined to chop 8.3 seconds off the standard C63's time. The Black Series time of 2 minutes 58 seconds is identical to the time of the far more expensive Gullwing, the SLS AMG. Without sacrificing creature comforts, AMG has dialed up feedback and grip to make the Black Series feel much smaller than its 4,044 pound weight might suggest. Quick steering warns of imminent slip, solid brakes scrub speed without protest, the C63 Black Series is a car whose attitude constantly says, trust me. We didn't like the 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox in manual mode. Fail to time the upshift perfectly and the heavy-handed rev limiter shuts down the power for what feels like an eternity certainly long enough to blow a hot lap. We worked around this issue by opting for Sport Plus mode. In that mode, the gearbox obeys downshift requests and usually downshifts perfectly on its own. And, more importantly, it snaps off the perfect upshifts at the red line. No need to guess or time the shift. Great track cars seem to read your mind, anticipate commands, and speak in affirmations. By that measure, and by its sub three minute lap, the Black Series is a great track car. Here are the times of the eight cars in the LL3 class. And here are the results of all the cars we tested at this year's Lightning Lab. Be sure to watch the rest of our videos from Lightning Lab. Thanks for watching.